Hi, this is Dr. Barb. I'm here with a new STEM fun um, activity to, to do with you. And this one's called Hollow Face Illusion. Okay, so I've, I've put a, a aluminum foil frame around it. And if you look carefully, let me turn it so you can see it. Oh, let me get my light better. There we go. Okay, so this is the hollow face illusion. So if you look carefully, it looks like my eyes are following you no matter where I go. And let's see. And I'm trying to turn it so the camera can see it. And I hold my light up a little more so it's a little better. Oops, there we go. So if you follow the eyes, it looks like the eyes are following you no matter where you go. And it's a simple illusion that you can make. And if you don't have a camera, you can actually draw your own face on a piece of paper. Just make it as big as life size as you can. And let me show you the secret to this. So I've made it in a cereal box. But you can see, instead of the face being bumped out like our faces normally are, this face is bumped in. And, and our brain picks it up as being three-dimensional because our brain is making sense of what is normal to it. And that allows our brain to say, wait a minute, no matter where it's turning, it's facing me. So what you'll need for this activity is a picture of yourself and make it as big on the paper as you can make it. Um, so you'll need a camera, and if you don't have a camera, you can use um, markers or, or color pencils. pencils. You can do a really nice uh, face uh, with colored pencils. And the lesson should be attached to it so you can follow through if you have any questions that we don't do on this video. Uh, you'll need a pair of scissors. And if you don't, if you have a camera and a printer uh, and a camera, I mean a computer, then you can take a picture of yourself. So one of the things that you need to do with the picture is hold your camera this way and try to get it so you're looking directly at the camera. I don't know if you can see that. Oops, oops lost it. So it's as big as the picture can, you can make it, and then you download the picture onto the computer, and then from there you can grab the picture and put it onto a Word document. That way you know that you can make it 8.5 by 11. A lot of times when I try to print a picture, it comes out in the size that the um, camera has set it to be. So I want it to be as almost life-size. You can see this is about life-size to my face. So you need to get a picture, the scissors, a cereal box. Uh, and the cereal box needs to be bigger than your face. So it is it Great Nuts, I think, is in a small box. Don't use that one. Use a bigger box like this or you know, your favorite cereal. You'll need a ruler. I have two here because I always have two rulers. And you need scotch tape or, you know, I, I like this one because it's clear, so it's clear cellophane tape. And that's all you need. So the first thing you want to do is take your picture. Or if you don't have that, draw a picture yourself. And then once you get the picture, you want to cut it out in the oval. So I'll, I'm sorry, pause here, pause me here, grab those supplies, remember your picture. Scissors, tape, ruler, and an empty cereal box. So pause here, grab those things, and when you're back, we'll get started on what to do. Got them? All right. So here's the picture. And what I want to do is I want to cut it out so that I get my entire face in there. I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch all the way around, so a little bigger than my face. And I'm 
Keep cutting around, cutting around, leaving a quarter inch away from your face. And you see the quarter of an inch right there. And then you don't need this part, so you can cut that part off. And this, you don't need any more, so you can recycle that. Okay. So here we go. Now, to make our face three-dimensional, what we're going to do is we need to make four cuts on our face. And um, you need to follow your smile lines. And you need to follow the angle of your eyebrow. So everybody's will be a little different because those are different features that we have. And if you look carefully, there's my smile line right there. So I'm going to take the scissors and I'm just going to snip right up to my smile line to my mouth. And then on this side, snip up to my smile line on my mouth. And then the same with my eyebrows. I want to snip up to where my nose starts. And then the same on this one. And to where my nose starts, oh, that's upside down. So you can see I've cut right there. You can kind of see, kind of see. Now, go ahead and, and make your snips. And then when you're done, let me pull the, the camera down so you can see better. Okay, now we're trying to make our shape into a bowl. So instead of making it like out, we're going to make it go in. And when you do this, what you want to do is overlap the outside of your face uh, eye to your forehead because it just looks a little better. Let me see if I can get the light and the camera angle. So you see, and I check and it looks okay. You don't want to do it too much. Here it's overlapped about a half an inch on the very outside. And then you're going to take your tape and tape it on the back side so the tape doesn't show on your face. Okay. And then we're going to do repeat it with the side. This side, oops, my tape's a little long, so I'm just going to snip it off. And I'm going to do it on this side too. And remember, you want the lower part of your face to go above your forehead because it just looks a little more natural that way. And you only overlap it here about a half an inch at the most. Doesn't have to be a lot, you just want to make your face a little bold shape. And then go ahead and then tape that on this side. Oh, oops. Hold those two pieces together. So now you can see it's dented in. Okay. Now on the lower face, it's the same thing, but this time you want to put the upper side of your face above the lower side. So, like that. Over only you only need to overlap it about a half an inch at the most, and then the same with the last cut. Now, if you have to draw this instead of you um, being able to take a picture, you do the exact same thing. You draw your picture. Um, make it look like you as much as possible, or maybe one of your friends or your, your family members. Okay, now here's my face. Now, this will you can start getting the, the illusion here. Let's see if I'll lift up the camera a little bit. Okay, you can get the illusion going here. little bit and if we turn it this way okay so now we're going to take the cereal box and that's what's going to make our frame now you can do use the pencil oh I did forget to say you needed a pencil but to make sure it's dark enough I'm just going to use a sharpie so you can really see what I'm doing 
So the front part of the box, it doesn't matter if you use the front or the back because you can wrap it to make it look like a frame. And we're going to take our ruler. Now on this one I want a little thinner ruler. Let me fix my light. And I'm just going to run it right along the outer edge of the box here. And I'm going to use this to be my frame edge. So I draw a line. And I must have drawn on the ruler instead of the box. Because there we go. And here. And here. And last one. Now don't include the top of the box because we can just close that up and seal it after we're all done. You want to leave it open because while you're making this, you might want to put your hand inside and that helps you get inside the box. Okay. So now we have our outer frame done. And what you want to do, now you have to be careful because this you can poke yourself. But I'm going to take the sharp part of my scissors, see my pointy end, and I'm going to put my fingers like this, and then I'm going to poke the scissors through. Now, Make sure you have a parent checking. Make sure you do this. The parent might want to do it for you, depending on how old you are. Because if you poke yourself, it really hurts. There. So I just made a cut, and then I can take and use my scissors and cut my frame out. So let's do that. Uh, another thing is uh, if you have something like a nail, you can poke the nail through and that's a little safer because you don't have to have your hand in there holding it. So whatever you do, do not poke yourself. That's just not allowed. Okay, so I'm cutting my frame and my frame right along the inner edge. So I have this lip all the way around my box to make my shadow box frame for my face. Now remember, you're going to wrap this up, and I just used aluminum foil because it's, you know, it's, you can shape it and hold the shape, and then I just taped it uh, to keep it from slipping, but you can use wrapping paper, you can use um, something that's like shelf paper that's sticky. Okay, so I just cut out the inner side, and that can be recycled later, and I now have the frame for my face. So now, remember, you don't want to include any part of this, because this is going to end up getting folded closed. So on the other side, what you want to do is place your face face down, and then you want to take your pencil, or I'm taking my Sharpie, I'm not including the top of the box. I want to center it as best I can, and then I'm going to draw around the outline of my face. And I'm going to be not be cutting. I'm not going to cut the line because if I cut the line, it's it, there's not enough of a lip to make your face. So there's a little bit of wiggle room in here. You don't have to be exact on outlining your face. There we go. So you can see my outline. Now when I cut it, instead of cutting it on this line, I'm going to be cutting it about a quarter of an inch in here instead so that that line will be visible all the way around. Okay, same thing if you have a nail. Use your nail. If not, be very careful. V your fingers like that. Put your hand in the box. Make sure that you get your parent to help you. And you want to gently poke those scissors. See, I'm kind of rocking it, putting pressure until the scissors go through. These are not real sharp, sharp scissors. They're a little um, thick, and so it takes a little bit more. If you have real thin scissors, that works pretty slick. And then same thing, put the scissors in. 
And remember, you want to leave a little bit of a lip. So I'm not going to cut all the way to the edge. I'm going to cut to about a quarter of an inch from there. And then cut around, leaving about a quarter of an inch on this, the edge of, of where I drew my face. Or my entire head, really. One of the things I notice um, when I've made these before is if your face, if you have like a, a straight line on this part, the face looks kind of funny. So you might need to trim this up a little bit more once you get it done. But once you put your face on and look through, you can tell. And we'll look at that in a second. Okay, let's finish cutting this. Yep. Go. You can recycle this, and there we have it. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to hold my face up here, and just look. And that looks pretty good. I made it nice and rounded all the way around. So yeah, so that will look okay. So then. Next thing is to take, and you want to tape your entire face down. Now, you cut with the little lips, so there won't be, you won't be able to see the tape seam. And I take about, I do it in several sections, and this tape is about maybe three inches long, and I just do little sections at a time. And I'll do the opposite side. Make sure it stays even on both sides. Oops. Just keep taping. So you want to make sure that the tape covers the entire seam between your face and the cereal box. Um, and you see what I'm doing is alternating sides, and that way it keeps my face up. Oh. So on that one, the the paper got tucked on the under the edge. I just pushed it up on putting my hand in the inside, and pushing it up because you want the entire face edge to be on the outside of the box. Okay, we're almost there. How you doing? If I get ahead of you at any time, just pause and when you're caught up, and start me again. So I have my face completely taped down all the way around the outside. And let me hold my light a little better. And so this is the hollow face illusion. And like I said, oh, let me get the light a little better there. And so what you can do is just take wrapping paper or aluminum foil and wrap out the outside of the, the box. And then you can tape the box closed at the top. The other thing you can do is if you have an old glove, a lot of times, like I'll lose one glove, what do I do with the other glove? You can put tissue paper in the glove and then you can put it at the bottom and have your hand sticking out. I, I'll show you upside down so you can have the glove kind of like this. Now it would be upside down, but you know, you'd have it right side up. And it looks like you have the hand right there holding on the outside. And that even emphasizes the 3D nature of it. So there we go. That's the hollow face illusion. Now the reason this works is you notice that the light never creates a shadow around the nose. And when we when we are moving you can see that 
when I move, I have a shadow here, here. And when there's no shadow, then it makes it look like the face is looking at you completely. The other is a mathematical concept. So the nose is normally the thing that's furthest from our face. And in this, the nose is the furthest away from you. So when we move, a car moving close by us looks like it's moving really fast. An airplane that's moving a whole lot faster flying overhead looks like it's moving fairly slow. And it's because it's so far away. So imperceptible distance of the nose moving a little slower than normal makes it appear like the face is always moving towards you, that it is that the nose is not changing position in orientation to you. So those are the two concepts for this hollow face illusion. So it's a cool one. You can make one for your of everybody in your family, hang it up, and it's just like totally spooky. Uh, if you want to hang it up, whatever you do is put another cereal box on behind it so you have two cereal boxes to um, keep it away from the wall and then you can hang them up. Anyway, so more STEM fun, a little math, a little physiology. What could be better? So until next time, we'll see you uh, for more STEM fun.